I'm Matt Williams. I'm an oncologist based in London. I'm Shivani Saini, one of the uh, lead CNSs that works with Matt Williams for Neuro-Oncology. Uh, and we've been asked to do a brief video uh, around brain tumour patients and coronavirus or COVID-19 because we know there are lots of people who have lots of questions. Uh, so to make it a bit more interesting, I thought we'd do it with both of us. Uh, and we've also got some people who are going to ask us questions. So how will COVID-19 affect my cancer treatment? Okay, so thinking about how COVID affects treatment, um, I think probably the first thing to say is that everyone will do their best to minimise impact. Uh, and certainly early on, there may be not very much impact. But realistically, going forward, there is going to be an effect, particularly for some people. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's fair. And I think there'll be an impact on the service that's offered and the way that works and kind of thinking about changing telephone clinics to uh, clinics, sorry, to minimise um, patients coming into hospital to kind of reduce that risk of them being exposed to COVID-19. So I think that will change in how the service runs will change. Yeah, so I think if we think about, if we talk about what we're doing, and obviously what we're doing is different to what other centres will do, but what we're doing is we're trying to push uh, as many patients as we can to either telephone or video uh, teleconference clinics. Uh, obviously our radiotherapy is continuing. Um, and then I think chemotherapy is more of a challenge. We know that chemotherapy affects your immune system. The uh, lower your immunity, the more likely you are to become infected and become unwell. And so there's clearly a balance there. So for our patients on chemotherapy, we are rediscussing with all of them. Uh, if they've already been on chemotherapy for, say, two or three months, we will rediscuss with them uh, whether we should carry on. Because I think the risks are different and it's all a matter of balancing risks and benefits. Will the decisions regarding my treatment be reviewed on a weekly basis by the clinical teams or is this just being made and then no other discussions around it? So the decisions we make in terms of uh, clinical decisions for patients will definitely be reviewed by the clinical team um, weekly because we appreciate that the situation with COVID-19 will continue to change as we go forward and therefore our decision making will have to change along with that. And specifically here for us, we are running more multidisciplinary team meetings to be able to discuss more patients a lot quicker. Yeah, so we've gone from having our usual weekly MDTs to now having an MDT three times a week to try and make decision making quicker. I think we have to accept that as the situation on the ground changes, what we're suggesting in terms of treatment might end up changing um, because there's still a lot we don't know about the illness and I hope that in six weeks time we'll know a lot more and therefore the decisions we make then will be different. Um, but in terms of things like you know, once we commit to a course of radiotherapy, we will do our best to carry it through. And that's one of the reasons why I think we have to try and get that decision at the beginning right, because the intention is then to carry it through. This is a question more for my clinical nurse specialist. Um, I'm very close to my clinical nurse specialist and I get a lot of comfort and reassurance from them. What's going to happen with that if I'm not allowed to come into hospital? Will they still be available to talk to on the phone and how will that go along? So we will still be available as much as we can manage. Um, it's you know, to be mindful of the fact that actually we are all fundamentally still nurses and we may be asked to kind of support services elsewhere in the hospital as the situation with kind of COVID-19 changes. Um, but we will endeavour to make sure there is someone within the team as one of the nurse specialists that is covering and on hand. It may take us longer to be able to respond to queries and calls and get back to everybody, but we are still there as that point of contact and that safety net for patients. And I think, I think that's really important. So one of the reasons we're doing all of this is absolutely to try and maintain a service, but we have to accept that uh, we're going to be stretched we're going to be stretched partly because there are going to be a lot of ill people in hospital, but also because staff are going to be ill. So in fact, when I planned this, I was hoping to do it with one of our neurosurgeons, but unfortunately they're off ill. And that's going to have a real impact. So we're going to have fewer people able to have neurosurgery easily. We've got some worries about giving chemotherapy, particularly in older patients. And we know that equally radiotherapy staff are going to be stretched and so are the nursing staff. So, you know, our aim is absolutely to continue to run a service, 
but we're going to have to accept that we're going to be stretched a bit more thinly. So this sounds like a bit of a silly question, but when I come into clinic, I've always been advised to keep active, stay mobile. That's quite a good thing for my physical health whilst being on chemo and radiotherapy. What would your advice to my treating doctors be right now? If we're down in lockdown, self-isolation, what should I be doing to look after you and stay well? Good question. Um, mm. I think our advice would still be to look after yourself, eat a balanced diet as you know best you can, um, and to try and take exercise where you can. And I know that the government have discussed being able to be out in open spaces where there are less people, so whether that's going for a long walk or if you're able to, a gentle jog. Um, so I think as best as you can, trying to stick to that advice that we'd normally give, I think is really important. Yeah, and I'd agree. Uh, and I think... You know, most of the risk of, around COVID-19 is around person-to-person -person transmission uh, at, or from touching surfaces. So actually, the risks from being out in the open air, away from people, are, should be pretty small. Um, and obviously, I mean, our interest is in brain tumour patients, but in fact, this applies to lots of people uh, who are at increased risk of uh, either contracting or, or coming to harm with COVID-19. But I think it is an important thing uh, which is to think about uh, the mental health aspects of this. So I think, understandably, having a brain tumour is a difficult diagnosis anyway, and then the idea that you might not be able to access care, you might not be able to get out of your house, is even worse. And I think in that context, that's one of the reasons I'd be really keen to walk, because it helps restore some of that normality. And although it might seem like a big change, in fact, talking to the same clinical team you're used to via video phone and getting out for a bit of a walk at least helps restore some of that normality. So the government has recently announced that people who are in high risk, so over 70 but or undergoing treatments or having comorbidities, severe illnesses, need to self-isolate for three weeks, three months. Again, I appreciate you said to go out, keep active, but what does self-isolation mean in your eyes? What should we be doing? How should we be um, keeping safe? So self-isolation really is about trying to minimise mm. contact with other people. So it's about staying in the house, uh, not going out really. You know, you're going to have to go shopping and things, but you might be able to get shopping delivered uh, and, and trying to reduce mm. contact with as many people as possible. So I hope that's been useful. Um, we've covered some of the topics, I think, that relate to COVID-19 yeah. and brain tumour patients. Uh, I suspect there'll be a, another whole load of questions, and we might revisit this in a week or two's time. Uh, if you have questions, talk to your clinical team, talk to your specialist nurses, uh, talk to the charities. Um, there is an increasing amount of information out there, and there's an increasing amount of support.